Hello everyone, Happy New Year. Um, it feels a way off just being the start of the year, doesn't it? Um, I really do hope you've had a lovely festive break. Um, I know it feels a while ago probably already, but um, yeah, I just took a complete break and I found it very, very helpful. I think, you know, whatever you do, it's important to give yourself a break at times and just go, com if you can, completely offline and just top top up yourself with your your own energy by just yeah withdrawing from things I find I find it really important actually uh Galen happy new year uh Stephen very happy new year to you it's lovely lovely to have you here thank you for joining uh, I'm sorry it's been ages hasn't it since I've done a fold it was obviously before Christmas um I'm just looking actually for next in two weeks time and I'm doing something unfortunately in the afternoon so I'm thinking I could do a 10 30 in the morning at like a coffee fold how does that sound Fernando lovely to have you Marnie lovely thank you for joining great to have you here so I will entitle this for the next time so in two weeks time but it's going to be 10 30 in the morning just just to be tricky but I think otherwise I'm getting a bit unstuck so um it's also because I'm in the hospital a lot more these days as well so um so I'm really excited about bringing this fold because I don't know have you come across this it's a traditional fold um maybe like this or oh, they're very very beautiful um, so it's traditional fold, um, obviously I don't know the origins therefore, um, but actually I came across this um, in Japan and um, it was at the uh, Yamatomo project. Um, oh, happy new year, Eric, thank you. Uh, yeah, one to watch. To be honest, this will be something to start. Um, so I hope this will get you started on it, but it'll be a project for you to continue on really. Um, so yes, in Japan, I just that was just so extraordinary. I'm still feeling in a ball of sunshine from how extraordinary. And I think this omotenashi, this Japanese spirit of making people feel very welcome, that get that gift giving, that care for others, has just really, really deeply touched me. Um, I'm very thankful to everyone there. And visiting the Yamatoma Project in Osaka was just extraordinary. Um, and there were these incredible trees of the origami cranes and they were topped with these these lotuses and I was just really intrigued I asked does anyone know how to fold them and I think the person who folded them wasn't there so um, I just looked online and found it bro welcome thank you for coming along um, and I was keen to learn now the ones I saw looked like this which is much longer petals and looking online if you slightly tweak the proportions you can get a lily, um, a lotus like this. It could be a lily as well, actually. Um, so it's really up to you which you prefer. I have to say also, just to think about the lotus, I was just reading a little bit um, in Buddhism. It's very beautiful. In Buddhism, it has real meaning of growing from the depths, from the dark, from the mud, uh, really unpromising, but that beautiful things can emerge. And I think it's that beauty emerging from hardship and from difficult times. So um, I think, you know, that has resonance with us all. And, and sometimes you have to kind of make your own beauty as well. It's that work that you put in yourself. So I really recommend this as a really lovely project to start the, the new year. And also the symbolism of it, but it's incredibly beautiful. And I really love how robust it is. And I don't know if you have come across this before, but it's all held together by a single rubber band. <laughs> and I love it's not, you know, it's it's modular, but it's held together with a rubber band, just a single one. So later on, if you can find yourself a rubber band, I think this traditional rubber colour is actually really nice as a centre because it looks like the centre of a um yeah of, of a flower oh thank you claire what sort of paper did you use so this one so this is what you do if you're i will show you but if you take a piece of origami paper and fold it and tear it in half to make two halves each one of those halves that rectangle which would be 15 by 7.5 centimeters would make a lotus like this so this is origami paper I personally find this a little bit too long, those petals, um, a little bit more like a pine cone. And, and I just saw online that people were also doing them a slightly different proportion. So here I'm using seven, seven by 12 as a ratio. Now for this, when I'm making my squares of paper, I'm often cutting up my own paper. And with A4 paper, I'm left with a strip 
and each time I keep that strip. So my strip of paper, I think is six centimetres long. And I thought, I'll use these scraps of paper. So this is made just from scraps of paper. And I think it was, I worked out to keep it in the ratio, 10.2 centimetres by six, but it's the same proportions. So this isn't any special paper, Claire. It's just using scraps, but this, this pink is rather nice. Um, I also had a go, uh, this is actually for making the film, which I've, which I've put online already, um, doing a little gradation of colour. Oh, I just realised I need to go and pick up my, I have been cutting some paper. So what I'll do is I'll explain what you need to do. Maybe you'll get started, but it's something to continue with as well. And it's not difficult. It's just a little bit of time, but it's, I think it's relatively simple compared to a lot of modular pieces. And as I said, I think it's delightful that it's held together with a rubber band. Very robust. I think you could hang this. I feel like it can completely survive. Uh, as long as the rubber band survives, I suppose. So actually, I'm just going to grab my little pile of paper. I won't be a second. Um, <clears throat> I was cutting up already, and I realised that you won't have done yourself yet. So as I said, this is more of an introduction. So what you need <laughs> is paper. Ideally, if you want to do one of this sort of nice proportions, 7 by 12. Now, I know with you've got origami paper, you can split your origami paper in half and it will come as 15 by 7.5 centimetres. But as I said, it produces a slightly longer flower. So it's up to you. But maybe what we can do is just practice a little bit how to make uh, how to make these pieces and the principle of it. And then you can continue with it, either using this film or the film that I've already made. It's quite simple in principle. Um, so I actually have been cutting up my own paper. So this is the sort of proportion. So if you were wanting to practice now, maybe take a piece of origami paper, fold it in half to make a rectangle. Good, good, strong fold. And then do a nice little neat tear and maybe remove a tiny bit at the top to make it a little bit more this sort of proportion so that sort of shape but maybe if I just show you the principle of the folding because the folding is very nice and simple and lovely to do I think I'm going to fold four to show you the principle we're going to end up doing in the end you'd end up doing four bundles four bundles or four <laughs> So we'll be using 16 pieces. It's actually all based around eight. <laughs> right. So grab yourself a board and some paper. Um, maybe I will just show you. Are you happy with the idea of making a square, cutting that in half and removing just a little bit? Or if you've got scissors, a uh, ruler, you could do it seven by 12. Obviously you could do it seven by 12 centimeters or it could be just in proportion. Um, so maybe if I make a square with you so that we can just fold along and I can explain, does that sound good? Yeah, so grab yourself some paper. Whatever you've got is fine, honestly. There we go. So uh, it's a bit of a hassle, isn't it? Things where you have to be prepared in advance. But for example, this is just to show you an example. Making a square. Mm, it's a really nice little project. Making a square, removing an edge. Whoops. I quite like doing a little gradation of colour. All I'm doing at the moment is if you haven't got your or any origami paper, which is completely fair enough, you can make a square as I'm doing out of any paper. Take that paper, simply fold it in half. Make a rectangle. And that will be 7.5 by 12 centimetres. But you'll see next to the paper I've already cut up the correct proportions that it's a bit long and it produces longer petals so can you see it looks a different proportion so if you are using this paper and I think just as a practice then I would guess to remove a bit so it looks sort of in proportion I'm just guessing honestly honestly I'm just guessing <laughs> If I leave that there, then you know what it is you'd need to prepare. 
there we go so this is just to show you happy with that now I think I'm going to move on to my paper that I prepared I might as well and then I can I'm actually going to make this for a friend in Japan so this is the start of a of a lovely project so with your piece of paper 77 by 12 or thereabouts if you take your piece of paper and just fold it in half they're all folded the same way the petals and the, and the leaves so simply folding it in half have any of you ever made this before this traditional fold i don't know if you know anything about it but i thought it's delightful and then open it up like so i'll do this a few times so you'll also get into doing it that's it never made this oh brilliant Stephen. yeah good i hope this will be a nice project for you each corner bring a little bit of brightness at this dark time of year actually the sun's a bit out today don't know about you but it's freezing though uh each corner folding up to that halfway line and it's actually it's quite nice and simple and actually that can be very calming i think doing something that's repetitive simple beautiful oh nice hmm. Hmm, I don't know Sarah Adams. I'm sure I should do. <laughs> I still feel like I'm a newcomer to the origami world. I just happen to be a scientist who does art, <laughs> does my own thing on the whole. But um, I think origami is the best side of, of humans sharing learning and engineering. A long time ago, I'm curious now. I'm going to be looking up. Adam's right. So is yours looking like this now? I don't think you have to be too exact either for this, to be honest. So don't worry about it. Just enjoy, enjoy your little journey. So like this, all we're going to do next is just fold the outside to the to the middle line, like so. Side and the other. I'm going to check what I'm doing. Definitely can get, and then the other side to meet in the middle. Sometimes you just need to see what you're doing. It's really quite wonky, <laughs> but it definitely will be good enough. Here we go, outside to the middle. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so, and then. Has that worked for you? Have you been able to make that? And then just take it as it is and fold it back with all of these things on the outside. So that would become your leaf. Great. Gonna get going on a petal next. So if you think what you would do is build up a little bundle of four and it's representing the leaf first and then the petals. Now I have been having a little bit of fun with doing gradations of colours, so I've got different kind of pinks. So I'm thinking of a dark pink on the outside next to the leaf. So this is the one I'm going to fold next. So you'd be doing four bundles of four. The first, the one at the very bottom, the inside of it is the green. So I'm going to do the next petal up. So I might just do one bundle and you can see, and then I'll try and explain. After that, I have also made a film of it as well. It's one of those things which I think it would take too long if I was really, if we were really to do it the entire thing together. And it's quite nice to have a little project to start with. And I hope this has raised your interest to actually continue it yourself. There we go. Again, the same each corner. And it's just lovely because it becomes something that you will kind of automatically do. Each corner. It's so focused, as I said, I'm using little scraps of paper, so that's particularly nice using things up and making making that into something that will then become very pretty. So people might even ask how what's your beautiful papers from? But it is just leftover pieces. The outside to the middle. And obviously all of these petals on these needs to be the same size as well. 
in order to go together as a set. I've just made another. And then take that and fold it back again. So that's another one. So it would actually go on top of the green one. So it fits on top. Like so. Uh, next one. I found actually it's quite nice to have a paper clip around because then it pops open otherwise. I'm just going to put on a paper clip just to keep that. So there's a green one, pink one. I still need to do another two pink before I've done one bundle. And then you do that in total four times. Mm. Right, I'm going to do another pink one. Are you getting the hang of it? So again, I'm going to fold this in half. As I said, I think I'll do one bundle with you and then explain what you do after that. I need, need to do that another three times. Or maybe find yourself papers that you feel would be really good for a lotus. It could be a lily too. I'm thinking of doing some orange or yellow ones too, I think. And I think with the rubber band on the back, you could probably like include some string there and hang it or tie it onto things. And I think that's what they've done for the or as uh, trees, the, the paper crane trees that they tied lotuses on the very top there and they look very beautiful. Here we go, in each corner. How are you finding it? There's always a lovely rhythm, I think, for doing the modular pieces. Mm, I agree, Eric. Little clips are very useful. Yep, that's exactly what I do as well. Or little pegs as well can be quite fun. Very relaxing, good. And then the outside to the middle. As I said, it's quite, you know, it is quite simple, this one. It's just, you know, requires a little bit of time and patience and a bit of preparing the pieces of paper, I'm afraid. <laughs> I hope you're getting the idea here. I've done my third petal now. So I'm again going to place it on here there we go I'm now up to three there and I'm going to do one last one okay so I'm going to do the palest pink this hopefully will be taken back to Japan by a friend for another friend there we go Okay, I'm folding in half each corner along that halfway line. So the next fold I'm going to do will be in two weeks, but I'm afraid it's going to be 10.30 in the morning. I hope that's okay. Maybe think of it as a little coffee and origami break in your day because I'm, I'm doing something with the school in the afternoon and otherwise I'm becoming a bit unstuck. So I'd... Be nice to get back if possible to every two weeks. Um, real life seems to come back, doesn't it? There we go, each side, and then very good. Yeah, I think next couple of weeks' time, maybe on a slightly Valentine's theme as well. Um, there's a traditional fold I've been wanting to do there. So, um, also, I'd really love to get back to those sort of samurai folds of making nice little gift containers so for me this is mine now my fourth one but this is really just to get you going on the principle so they should all stack on each other not massively neatly but what I'd want you to do is to do four like this four and keep them separate actually to keep them separate like that. Um, the paper clip is quite helpful. So what you would do once you've done, if you imagine there are three bundles like that, and then what you do is grab a rubber band. Oh, lovely. Yes, a heart. Um, and you would do the rubber band, round and round and round. As I said, you could include a little string at this point. Um, and what you'd start to do is each bundle would almost be a petal in itself. So you'd start start with the other bundle, start pushing them down so that they radiate almost like a daisy, all from this middle point. 
and then what you do is you'd start to uncurl from the inside out so here you would start to uncurl it very gently like this hopefully i can show you kind of uncurling and rolling it up and that's the basis so you do all of the ones inside and then the next layer and so on until you get to the green at the very back which is at the very back um, and you open them but maybe not quite as wide so that you've got them there more almost as leaves does that make sense <laughs> i've made a film already as well about this or you can look back at this the key is making those those pieces and i do think i could send this to you in advance but who, who really wants to be doing that in advance so i think that i hope this has whetted your appetite to continue but making those piece 12 pink or whatever color four green as your petals making them in bundles stacked up like this and then you start to uh yeah keep them separate the first of paper clips then these four bundles tying them together with a rubber band in the middle and that's the whole key for it being tough um and then you'd start to separate them out so that they look a bit more like a daisy so each bundle is a uh, like this stays together um and then you start to unroll as you saw there yeah <laughs> your challenge should you wish to accept it but I think it's well worth it. And hopefully you began to get the idea. Um, yeah, and this is using that proportion. Or you can go with half pieces of origami paper, which is obviously easier. And, you know, it's lovely as well. It's just, it's just a slightly different proportion. It depends which you prefer. Just a matter of taste, really. So I hope that's been fun to get back to it. Um, oh, a very nice idea. Yeah, you could really get experimenting on. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? I really like the colour of a natural rubber band. Look at that. I thought it looked perfect for the inside of a flower. So obviously, yeah, be aware of the colour of your rubber band. And there may be transparent ones, but I, I liked the colour of it myself. Um, but yeah, there will be colourful bands as well. I love the idea of all sorts of beautiful papers in there. Oh, that's a good idea. I've just tear off a day calendar. Mm. Yeah, is that the origami calendars? Mm -hmm. or yeah thinking what scrap paper you could use from the past making it into a beautiful lotus um i really hope you'll have fun with this project um and bring as much enjoyment as it has to me it's as always it's all about sharing and that's what people have done and that's why i'm able to share with you so thank you it's a dog it's a dog one. Oh, oh it's a dog sorry <laughs> uh, oh. well i hope it makes a nice lotus and hopefully that's got you started so ah uh, no, no no sorry thank you a single rubber band so if you imagine that there were four bundles of paper and they're all tied together in the middle by a single rubber band and then you would start to separate um these four bundles almost like the shape of a day so you'll see um you'll say oh wow it's an origami calendar that got you started that's interesting Stephen yeah as your friend gave me one of those calendars uh, the only thing is I found I didn't necessarily keep up with it and then I felt bad about it which just wasn't quite the idea um yeah so a single rubber band in the middle and that's it one band one band piece of paper that's it yeah any other questions or is there anything else? I know it's not so clear when I don't show you the entire thing, but I think it would take a long time. And you'd, I think you'd need all of your papers. Oh, you're welcome, Galen. Well, wishing you a good couple of weeks, and I will see you in a fortnight if you happen to be free in the morning at 10.30. Uh, excellent. Yeah, and please, if you if you were able to or you wanted to share any pictures, lovely to see them. I'm on Twitter at Dr. Lizzie Burns or Facebook. Um, Join the fold, join the fold, <laughs> origami to beat boredom. Um, yeah, and absolutely fine if you don't as well. But if you did want to share, it's really nice to see. Have a lovely rest of your week. Look after yourselves and I hope this will lift your spirits too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>